Writer and executive producer Dan Rubin, best known for his work on The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, is set to take the lead in the highly anticipated NBC reboot of Night Court. The series, which is still in development, is said to be a direct follow-up series to the classic legal comedy series. John Larroquette is locked in to reprise his Emmy-winning role as Dan Fielding, and Melissa Rauch of The Big Bang Theory is said to be taking on a production role for the sequel series alongside her husband, Winton Rauch. The show will essentially pick up where the original series left off. An unapologetically optimistic judge, Abby Stone, daughter of her late father, Harry T. Stone, follows in his footsteps by presiding over the night shift of a New York arraignment court as she tries to maintain the peace amidst a sea of oddballs, flakes, and fault finders she must learn to work alongside. Melissa and Winston Rauch's After January Production Company, a subsidiary of Warner Brothers TV, have taken on the task of producing the new series. The original was also produced by the WB, even though the series aired on NBC. At this time, it seems as if there are no plans for Melissa Rauch to act in the project. Rauch grew up as a fan of the show and initiated the production of the new series, thinking it would mesh well with audiences today. Night Court is just one of several projects in development by After January. Rauch, who's fresh off playing Bernadette Rostenkowski Wallowitz on The Big Bang Theory for 12 seasons, has been diversifying her Hollywood involvement in recent years. She appeared in Steven Soderbergh's The Laundromat in 2019 and voiced historical figure Marie Antoinette in an episode of the 2020 reboot of Animaniacs. In 2015, she and her husband wrote, produced, and starred in The Bronze, which was the opening night film showcased at that year's Sundance Film Festival. Off screen, she's written and starred in the stage production of The Secret Lunches of Chelsea and Ivanka at Joe's Pub in New York City. Larry Kett won four Best Supporting Actor Emmys for his role on the original Night Court. He won his fifth Emmy in 1988 for his recurring role on ABC's The Practice. His most recent contributions to the world of show business include starring in CBS All Access's The Good Fight and Me, Myself, and I on CBS. Rubin worked on the Netflix series Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt for the show's duration. He went on to again collaborate with Tina Fey, Sam Means, and Robert Carlock on the Netflix animated series Mulligan. Some of his other credits include his contributions to shows like Outmatched, Scrubs, and The Michael J. Fox Show. It's not completely clear as to when we might be able to catch episodes of the new Night Court series. Rumor has it the series might premiere for the fall 2021 season. But regardless, we're pretty excited to see what comes next. Hopefully, the new show can find the right balance of staying true to the original series while breaking new ground exploring new territory. Rebooting a beloved TV series can mean risky business. I mean, have you seen the MacGyver remake? Brutal. To celebrate the upcoming Night Court remake, let's take a look at what made the original series so great. We've got some top-notch behind-the-scenes trivia for you, so make sure you stick around to learn them all. And if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. John Larroquette was too good at what he did. After winning four Emmys for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series, he personally requested that he no longer be considered for the coveted award. Can you imagine being so good at your job, you have to ask to be recognized less? Talk about living the dream, right? He was subsequently offered his own spin-off series based upon his Dan Fielding character, but decided to pursue other opportunities instead. A surprise cameo by a popular singer. It's briefly mentioned in the first episode that Harry Stone is a huge fan of popular jazz pop singer Mel Torme. Torme's friends and family called him up after seeing the episode to tell him about his little shout out. He was so flattered by the reference that he agreed to come on the show for a cameo. He later revealed the shout out and subsequent cameo widened his audience and gave his singing career a much needed second wave. So many recasts. It's not uncommon for some of the actors in a pilot episode to be replaced with better fits. But for Night Court, there was an unprecedented number of recasts that happened in the first season. Six female leads were brought in before the production team settled on Marquee e. Post to play public defender Christine Sullivan. The only members of the cast to stick with the show from its pilot episode all the way to the series finale were Richard Mull, Harry Anderson, and John Larroquette. 
The cast had to pack up and leave rather abruptly. You'd think that after 193 episodes, the cast of Night Court might have earned themselves a little respect from the studio. But after wrapping up taping of the final episode on a Friday, the entire crew were all sent messages informing them if they didn't have their dressing rooms cleared out by Monday, all their belongings would be thrown in the trash. The opening credits remained the same. Most shows will shake up their title sequences over consecutive seasons, especially when they remain on the air for as long as Night Court did. But for all nine seasons from 1984 to 92, Night Court's opening credits remained exactly the same. Each episode started off and closed with jazz-inspired music composed by Jack Elliott, featuring Ernie Watts on saxophone. Footage of iconic New York landmarks like the Brooklyn Bridge and the New York County Courthouse preceded the show's title card. A random horror movie reference. There's an episode where Dan is trapped inside of a motel room with a deranged woman. On the TV, an announcer can be heard saying, we'll return to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in just a minute. Dan quips that he's, quote, seen that already. In fact, John Larroquette narrated both the original film and the remake in 2003. Roz had to be recast multiple times because of death. Selma Diamond died shortly after filming wrapped up on season two. She was replaced by Florence Halep, who the production team felt like was the perfect fit for the character. Halep, unfortunately, passed away after just one season of being on the show. After she died, the studio realized they better pick a younger actress for the role. They eventually settled on Marsha Warfield. Harry Anderson was a real-life magician. Harry T. Stone was constantly playing around and pulling gags when he was supposed to be working. It's a wonder he was able to become a judge in the first place. At one point, he explains he landed the job because he was the only one home to accept the offer when the call came in for the judge position. Harry Anderson, the actor who played Stone, actually had something in common with the character. He was obsessed with magic. He studied sleight of hand and even made a living off of his performances before he became an actor. Richard Mull's baldness. Bull Shannon is not the kind of guy you'd want to pick a fight with. He was one massive dude, but his towering height wasn't the only distinguishing feature he had. When Mall showed up to audition, he had just shaved his hair for a film role. After meeting with the producers, they actually dug the chrome dome look and told him to keep it for the character. Now, most people who have any amount of appreciation for their hair might have found the request to be difficult, but Mole decided to bite the bullet. Sometimes an actor has to make some sacrifices for their work. Marky Post also worked on game shows. Before finding her place in Hollywood, Marky had previously worked on a number of game shows behind the scenes. The first job she landed in show business was working on Split Second. She quickly moved up in the world. Her next job was as an associate producer for Double Dare. She also worked as a production assistant on Family Feud for a while. In 1979, she got her first on-screen role on a made-for-TV movie called Frankie and Annette, the second time around. Even though she probably was one heck of a worker behind the scenes, Marky was destined to be in front of the camera. Yakov Smirnov During the Cold War, Yakov Smirnov, a Ukrainian-born comedian, experienced a great deal of popularity. He made a number of guest appearances on Night Court during the 80s. His popularity declined after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And while he still tours and performs and even has his own theater in Branson, Missouri, he's largely shifted his focus to other endeavors. Today, he teaches psychology in universities and gives self-help style seminars. Harry Anderson on SNL Before he was one of the world's most beloved judges, Harry Anderson made a name for himself with his recurring appearances as a guest comedian on SNL. He would whip out his magic skills coupled with his childlike sense of humor, and the audience would eat it up. Well, here we are at the end of another fact-packed video. Are you as excited as we are about the Night Court reboot? We'd love to hear from you. Who was your favorite Night Court character? Judge Harry T. Stone, Christine Sullivan, or Dan Fielding? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications by tapping the bell icon.